Welcome to Creative Tian channel. Today I'm going to use Brother 260 knitting machine for the neckline shaping. I'm going to use this example for adult size. It's about woman's median. And this is one of the typical shape. A half circle in the middle and some slopes on both shoulders. If you are using a different machine, the technique is the same. I use the partial knitting on the shoulder, so you will need a holding button for the partial knitting. And this will work for LK152. The first thing we have to make a swatch to find out the right tension. I'm using medium weight yarn. It's actually Lion Brain Pound of Love. It's an acrylic yarn, but it's very economical. And I have to wind it into a cake first before I machine knit. And I have to wind it into several cakes because one pound of medium weight is a lot. So how do you design your own neckline? It's really not that difficult. First, I have some measurement and draw it down. You can see the neckline, the width I have 9 inches and the depth from the neck down is 4 inches and I divide it into 3 parts so it's 3, 3 and 3 inches and for the shoulder decrease I have about 1 inch height and you can adjust up or down, it's up to you and all the measurement you can personalize because we are going to create our own chart the second chart is to convert the first chart into stitches and the raw numbers. Based on the swatch, I have about 3.75 stitch and 5.75 raw per inch. So I just times the previous number and come up with all my stitch numbers. And of course you can adjust it to make it a whole number you can go up or down a little bit. So you can see the neckline, I have 3 of the 12 stitches. And the outside that, I have 15 stitches on left and on the right. And for the depth of the neck, I have about 23 rows for the 4 inches. And the decrease of the shoulder will be about 5 rows. So I put all the measurement in. So the total stitches will be 66 stitches on the front side. And the third chart is only half of the neck. I'm drawing it stitch by stitch. I just use my notebook and draw the grid. And you can see the center line on the left side. Since we have 12 stitches in the middle, each side has 6 stitches. So you can see the bottom left side, we have six stitches, flat, and then we start the shaping. And I try not to have decrease on two continuous rows, and because I'm using the partial knitting method, so it works better this way too. And it's the same with the shoulder shaping. If you don't want to use a partial knitting, you can always use a full fashion decrease just use a two-prong or three-prong transferring tool to transfer the stitch for decreasing. After you sketch out the shape you like and put it on the graph paper, you can see very clearly where do you have to decrease. So I start knitting with a few rows of waist yarn and based on my own swatch, I use tension 9 and I have total of 66 stitches. And after a few rows, I change it to my main yarn, that's the white color. And based on my chart, I have 30 rows from the underarm until the beginning of the neck shaping. So I need 30 rows of plain knitting first. And we can start to shape the neckline. And according to the chart, I have the center 12 stitches flat so I don't need to do anything. I can just put it on the waist yarn or just bind them off. For now I'm going to put it on the waist yarn and just hand knit it.
I hand knit two rows of waist yarn just to make sure it doesn't fall out easily. And I'm going to work on one side first. So I put the other side on hold. To do that, you just pull out all the needles to the E position and push the button to hold position on the carriage. Now based on my chart, I need to decrease two stitches on the first row and then have one row of plain knitting and then decrease two stitches. I'll repeat that three times. So I pull out the leftmost two needles to the E position so the machine will not knit it back. And then we knit one row. After that, we have to make sure place the yarn to the underside of the needle and knit one row. And we have to repeat this three times. So we pull out two more needles to the E position, knit one row, and then move the yarn under the first needle and then knit back one row. We repeat three times and then we will start to decrease one stitch every other row for five times. So we'll do the same, just pull out one stitch, knit one row, and then move the yarn under the first needle and knit one row. We repeat it five times and then we'll go to the last decrease. For the last decrease, we have three plain rows in between. And after three plain rows, we do the same for one stitch decrease. Now we complete all the decrease on the neckline side. And our chart shows the decrease on the shoulder side. For this partial knitting technique, it's easier to work on the needle that's opposite to the carriage. So right after the last decrease on the neckline, we start to move the five stitches on the shoulder side to the E position. And then we keep knitting the same way. Move the carriage across and then move the yarn under the first needle and then move carriage back to the other side. And then the next decrease is also five stitches. So we pull out five stitches and we will do the same. Knit across and then move the yarn below the first stitch. Then we knit back. Since our carriage and the yarn is in the middle, so we want it to be on the side of the project. So we move all the needles to the D position so we can knit every stitch back. And then we can change to waist yarn and just knit back and forth for a few rows. So we can take it off the machine or just leave it on the machine. And then we can work on the other side. The other side is the same way using the same chart, except all the charts are opposite. Now we move the carriage to the left side of the project. Make sure the right side and the center needle will be in the E position if it's still on the machine, or you can just take them out of machine and hand it down. So we start to decrease from the center again. We pull out two needles to the E position, knit across, and then move the yarn under the first needle and then knit it back. After finishing the shoulder shaping, we can change the yarn to waist yarn and knit a few rows. If you want, you can knit the waist yarn across the whole project, both left and right side, and then just take the project off the machine. Now we just finish the front piece. You can do the same with the back piece. Just draw the chart with the smaller opening in the back and we can knit the same way. 
You can give it a blocking. I usually just give a steam iron and that will flatten the curve and make the stitches more even. In the next video, I will show you how to hand it back to the machine and finish the neck band and the different choices you have for the neck band. Thank you for watching today and see you in the next video.